Let's solve a couple of problems of objects in free fall, but when they're both going up and down. Here's, here's the first example. Spider-Man jumps straight up and lands back in eight seconds. Calculate the velocity with which he jumped up, given g as 10 meters per second square. So what's given to us? Well, it's given that we have Spider-Man. So here's our Spider-Man. It's given that he's gonna jump straight up like this, goes up, and then lands back, and it takes him eight seconds for him to go up and come back down. And we are asked to calculate the velocity with which he jumped up. So with what velocity he jumps up. So how do we do this? Well, because objects in free fall always have a constant acceleration, this means we can go ahead and use the three equations of motion and solve what we want. And we have solved problems like this in a previous video called free fall one body solved example. But the difference over here is that Spider-Man goes both up and comes back down and the total time is given to us. What's the problem over there? The problem is when Spider-Man is going up, he's slowing down. And during that time, his acceleration becomes negative because he's becoming slower and slower. On the other hand, when Spider-Man is coming back down, his velocity increases. He becomes faster and faster. And during that time, the acceleration becomes positive. So we cannot consider the total motion because during one motion acceleration is negative and during the other motion the acceleration becomes positive, which means we have to either consider the upward motion separately or the downward motion separately. Only then we can apply the equations of motion, right? So the first question we need to ask is which motion should we consider? The upward motion or the downward motion? Well, look at what is asked. We are asked to calculate the velocity with which he jumped up. So it makes sense to think about his upward motion, right? So that's the first thing. So let's only consider the upward motion. Upward motion. Which means we are going to consider Spider-Man jumping all the way up like this and coming to rest at the topmost point. After that, he comes back down. So we'll only consider from here to here. So let's see what's given to us. So in that, we need to calculate what the initial velocity is. We know the final velocity, that is zero. Why is the final velocity zero? Because at the topmost point, he's at rest, isn't it? After that, he starts coming back down. He starts speeding up downwards, right? So we know its final velocity is zero. We know the acceleration. Acceleration is 10, but because he's going up, it's, his, his, his uh, velocity is decreasing, so it's negative 10. But the big question is, what is the time? Is it eight seconds? No, that's the time it takes for him to go up and come back down. We want to calculate how much time it takes only to go up. So it's gonna be less than that, but how much? Well, here's the secret to solving this entire question. You see, when Spider-Man is going up, his upward motion is going to be the exact reverse of his downward motion. It's going to be exact reverse of that. You know why? Because while he's going up, he's losing velocity at 10 meter per second square rate. And when he's falling down, he's gaining velocity at the same rate. Since he's gaining at the same rate, it's exactly the reverse. Make sense? This means the amount of distance he travels and the amount of time it takes for him to go up for him to go up, it's gonna be the same amount of time it's gonna take him and the distance he's gonna travel when he comes back down. Okay, does that make sense? Because the acceleration is the same, that's the most important thing over here. And as a result, we can now say, if it's gonna take the same time to go up and come back down, that means it should take him half the time to go up and half the total time to come back down. Since we know the total time is eight seconds, half of that is going to be four. So that means he's gonna take four, let me write that down, okay. He's gonna take four seconds to go up and four seconds to come back down. That's the secret, that's the important 
part over here. And now that we have this data, we can now just pick which equation we want to use, go ahead and solve the problem. So can you go ahead and try this yourself first? Pause the video and see if you can pick which equation, I mean, if you can figure out which equation to pick and see if you can solve for you. Well, let's see, hopefully you've tried. If you look at the first equation, we know V, we want to calculate U, we know A, and we know T. Hey, we have everything we want, and so we can pick equation number one. What about equation number two and three, just to check? Well, we can't use two because it has S in it. We don't know S, and we don't know U, two unknowns we can't solve. Similarly, we can't use a third equation also because again, we don't know U, which we want, and we don't know S also. So two unknowns are there, so we'll pick only the first equation because there's only one unknown. And so if we substitute in the first equation, V equals zero, U is what I want to calculate, plus A is negative 10 meters per second squared, and T is four seconds. So if we simplify, we'll get zero equals u minus, because there's a minus sign, 10 times four is 40. So let me just put that 40. And let's see, a second cancels over here. So we get meters per second. If we add 40 meters per second on both sides, we will get 40 meters per second is going to be u. And there's our answer. This means Spider-Man jumped up with a velocity of 40 meters per second. Let's do another one. Deadpool jumps up with 50 meters per second. How long will it take him to land back? This is a very similar question. So can you try and uh, draw a diagram and see if you can solve this entire question yourself first? Go ahead, pause the video and give it a shot. Okay, hopefully you've tried. So here's our diagram, here's our Deadpool. It's given he's gonna jump up with 50 meters per second. And we are asked to calculate how long it'll take him to go up and then come back down. Now what we, for, from what we saw in the previous video, in reality, all we have to calculate is how long it'll take for him to come up or go up, right? Because the same amount of time will take him to come back down. So let's say if it takes him, I don't know, maybe 10 seconds to go up, then it'll take 10 seconds to come back down and the total time would be 20 seconds. So that's all we have to do, just like before, figure out how long it takes for him to go up. So we'll only consider the upward motion. So let's go ahead and write what we know. We know the initial velocity is 50 meters per second. We know it's acceleration because he's going up, he's slowing down, so his, um, his velocity will decrease, and so his acceleration is going to be negative 10 meters per second squared. Time is what we need to calculate, and we have his final velocity. His final velocity is zero. And just like before, if you look at the three equations and check which equation to go for, we have to go for the first equation. Because again, the other two equations have S in it and we don't know S and we don't know U, so these equations have two unknowns. So we'll pick the first equation and we will solve it. And so if we substitute now in this first equation, the values, I mean, which I'm pretty sure you can do all by yourself, just to save time, then the time turns out to be five seconds. So if you had not solved this before again, great idea to pause and see if you can get this answer. So is our answer five seconds? No. This means Deadpool takes five seconds to go up and because we saw the upward motion is exact reverse of downward motion, it's gonna take the same time to come back down. That means five seconds to go up, five seconds to come back down. That means the total time taken, that's us asked how long it'll take for him to land back. Total time, that's our final answer, total time will be 10 seconds, double of this, five plus five. So it's gonna be 10 seconds. And this is our answer. This is only for the upward motion. Okay, so what did we see in this video? Well, we saw whenever we have problems which have both upward and downward motion, we can choose only one of them to solve our problem. 
And the secret is the upward motion is exact reverse of downward motion. This means that they're gonna take the same time to go up and come back down. 